the name of our God. Glory, hallelujah. As we gather in his name, we trust God in the presence of the Holy Spirit, asking him to grant us the grace to truly worship our God in spirit and in truth. As we pray for God's help for Akada somewhere in her studies, as requested by the mother, I'm praying for God's intervention, healing, and continued protection for Carrie Grant and family, as requested by the aunt. We pray for each other. We pray for those who have access to pray for them. We pray for those who are in need of our prayers. The God who today in Mary visited Elizabeth, may touch them. Today, the church celebrates the feast of the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We ask God to touch and to visit us through Mary in the various areas that we need him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, dear friends, be with you all. Let us call to mind our human weaknesses in times of falling short, trusting God's mercy and his power to forgive us. Mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord, mercy, O oh Lord, hear us. For the times our thoughts have strayed from you. Mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord, mercy. O Lord, hear us. For the times we have hurt each other by our words. Mercy, Christ, mercy, Christ, mercy, O Christ, hear us. For the times our actions have betrayed your love and friendship. Mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord, mercy, O oh Lord, heal us. With the Almighty God, have mercy on us, heal us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, while the blessed Virgin Mary was carrying your son in her womb, inspired her to visit Elizabeth, grant us, we pray, that faithful to the promptings of the spirits, we may magnify your greatness with the Virgin Mary at all times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, daughter of Zion. Israel, shout aloud. Rejoice, exult with all your heart, daughter of, Jer of Jerusalem. The Lord has repealed your sentence. He has driven your enemies away. The Lord, the King of Israel, is in your midst. You have no more evil to fear. When that day comes, word will come to Jerusalem. Zion, fear, have no fear. Do not let your hands fall limp. The Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exult with joy over you. He will renew you by his love. He will dance with shouts of joy for you on, as on a day of festival. The word of the Lord. Great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Truly, God is our salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my savior. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. Great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Gospel acclamation. And Blessed is the Virgin Mary, who believed that the promise made her by the Lord will, would be fulfilled. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings. The child left in a womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, 
of all women, you are the most blessed. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb left for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made by her, made her by the Lord, will be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me, holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm, he has rooted the proud of heart, he has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. May God, through the Holy Spirit, bless his holy words in our heart. Yesterday, as church, we celebrated our awesome God in the Trinity. God's dynamic and intimate friendship with us. That God is here with us. As I said, I'm always with you until the end of time. And I remember the words of Matthew 18, verse 20, when he said, Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am. And like the psalmist said today, great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel, our God, our great and awesome God with us in his love. What a joy to have him. And that joy was expressed in the first reading from the prophet prophecy of Zephaniah. Say, shout for joy, daughter of Jerusalem, for the Lord God is in your midst, taking away the shame of exile, and he brings it to an end as a warrior. Victory is in his hands. That is the God who serve. That is the God who look out for us. That is the God who helps us to bear the fruit of joy. And that joy today is the joy of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the joy that Mary shared. And she proclaimed in a song, the song of Mary, the song that is called the Magnificat. In Latin, Magnificat anima mea dominum. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. So Mary's song is a song of joy, a joy of faith, the joy that filled the heart and the house of Zachariah, the husband of Elizabeth. And the child in Elizabeth's womb leapt for joy. She who could not conceive for a long time, was today in her sixth month. And that is the miracle of grace 
the grace of God working in us. It is the song that I would think calmed the nerves of the doubting Zachariah, who could not speak because he doubted the word of the angel. He couldn't sing, but today Mary sang for them. He sang in the house. He could not speak. He couldn't sing because he did not believe. But Mary sang because she believed. And he said, blessed is he who believe that the word spoken to her by the Lord will be fulfilled. Zechariah only spoke when John was born. John who leapt for joy in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth, who began to prepare the way for Jesus, even right there. So we are a people of faith, and we share that joy of faith. The joy that is said in John Gospel 20, verse 29, that you believe because you can see me, but blessed are those who did not see me, but believe. And if God say we are blessed, in truth, we are blessed. And today, dear friends, as a church, we remember that great feast, the visitation. In the words of Pope Saint Pope John Paul, we say one of the invocation in Mary's litany is that she is the joy of the nations, that she is moved by love and charity. Therefore, Mary goes to the house of her kinswoman, while every word of Elizabeth filled with meaning, her final word will seem to have a fundamental importance. And blessed is she who believes that there will be a fulfillment of what has been spoken to her from the Lord her God. The words can be linked with the title, full of grace of the angel's greeting. Both of these texts reveal an essential Mariological in content, namely the truth about Mary, who was, or who has become really present in the mystery of Christ, precisely, precisely because she has believed. The fullness of grace announced by the angel means the gift of God himself. Mary's faith proclaimed by Elizabeth at the visitation indicates how the Virgin of Nazareth responded to the gift, the gift of God in her. Even when she did not understand, she responded in faith when she gave her fiat. That I am the Lord's handmaid. Let what you have said be done to me according to your words. Dear friends in Christ, to visit is a sign of love. To visit is a sign of care. To visit is indeed an honor. So visit done in charity brings joy and happiness. As people of the Eucharist we are, we have received Jesus and even at this Mass, we are going to receive him again. So let us bring Jesus to those we meet, to those we visit. For he said, I was in need, and you came to my aid. You came to visit me. Now come and enter into the joys of your father, the joys of the kingdom of God, prepared for you and me from the foundation of the world. So I pray that as many we encounter, as many we meet, as many that we visit, we may bring Jesus, the Jesus that Mary carried in her womb while she went to visit Elizabeth. We will bring Jesus, we will bring some solace, some care, some love, some kindness to everyone we meet this day. Relying on the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we ask her to help us with her prayer.
his word in our hearts. This poem says, Lord, may your mother pray for us. Lord, may your mother pray. Let us proclaim the greatness of our Savior, who chose to be born of the Virgin Mary. Confident that he will hear us, we ask, Lord, may your mother pray for us. Son of justice, you showed your day it was dawning in the Immaculate Virgin Mary. Help us to walk in the daylight of your presence. Mother, Mary, pray for us. Eternal Word, you taught your mother Mary to choose the best part, the part that was best. Let us follow her example and hunger for food of everlasting life. Lord, Savior of the world, by your redemption, by your redemptive power, you preserved your mother Mary from every stain of sin. Deliver us from the evil that lies hidden in our hearts. Amen. Christ, our Redeemer, you made the Virgin Mary the sanctuary of your presence in the temple of the Spirit. Make us bearers of your Spirit in mind, heart, and body. We pray for vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and good family life. Lord, we pray for protection from against all natural disasters. Lord, we pray for the sick in our parish and in our families. Lord, we pray for your private intentions. Lord, may your mother pray for us. In the silence of our hearts, we add our own private intentions. Now those who are joining this Mass, the Lord knows their needs. We ask God to meet them at the point of their needs, to grant their heart desires. Now those who have promised to pray for, we bring them before the Lord this moment. May the words of our mouth and the thought of our hearts find favor in your sight. And this is the prayer of your church in faith and in trust to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and brothers that our sacrifice and all the prayers we have offered at this Mass may be acceptable to God, your Almighty Father. May our offering of this saving sacrifice be acceptable to your majesty, O Lord, as you were pleased to accept the charity of the most blessed mother of your only begotten son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo a thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with us in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, unto you. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Clyde Martin, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. For those who pray for at this Mass, those who have promised to pray for, those who are joining this Mass, Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us, our Father. Thank you, Lord, that we be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, the evil that threatens our lives. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you will set to your apostles as you have seen to all of us gather here and those who are joining at this Mass. Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Fellow believers, behold Jesus, 
the Lamb of God, behold him who Mary carried and who brought joy to Elizabeth, behold him who takes away our sins and the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the holy supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that she enter on the mouth. Say the word. Let us pray. May your church proclaim your greatness, O God, for you have done great things for your faithful, 
And as St. John the Baptist leapt with joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of Christ, so may your church rejoice to receive in this sacrament the same ever-living Lord, through Christ our Lord. The Lord Jesus be with you all. And may the blessings and the protection of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit abide with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Go forth in peace. This Mass is ended. Have a blessed day, dear friends. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Here in the Diocese of St. George's in Grenada, the faithful are happy to return to our churches, our places of worship, where we share fellowship and participate in the greatest gift Jesus left us, the Holy Eucharist. 
The coronavirus pandemic kept us away for a long time, but we've reopened the church using the government's recommended guidelines. Everyone is expected to sanitize their hands on entering the church. This must be done at the designated entry where you must register your attendance. The church must supply a list of attendees to the Ministry of Health to enable contact tracing should someone become infected with COVID. Proceed quickly to your seats where the six foot distance must be maintained unless you live in the same household. Keep your mask on at all times. Avoid as far as possible touching surfaces like benches, seats, etc. Unless otherwise advised, the faithful walk in the main aisle to offer their gifts and return via the side aisles. An usher will direct you to prevent unnecessary physical contact. Please remember, there should be no physical contact at the sign of peace. We proceed to the altar to receive the Holy Eucharist. We maintain our physical distance and receive the body of Christ in our left hand. Step aside and using your right hand, remove the right handle of the mask. Place the host in your mouth and replace the handle of the mask. At the end of the mass, please leave with urgency through all available exits and avoid congregating in the aisles and outside the church. Love your neighbor, keep your distance, wear your mask, wash your hands.